good morning good afternoon or good evening ladies and gentlemen depending on which part of the globe you are at this point in time so i'm shanti swarup and i'm here to present our work on enabling real time estimation of bohol parameters in deep drilling this is a brief overview of the presentation where i would spend some time on introduction followed by literature mathematical model results and discussion and conclusions coming to the introduction part of it Oil and gas exploration usually happens at depths that is more than ten thousand feet. However, the hole diameter through which the drilling happens is usually in the range of ten to fifty centimeters, and the the well bore goes through varied geological environment. The well paths are usually pre-planned. However, the well paths are either horizontal, deviated, or complex three D. So the challenge with the three D well bores is that the increased complexity of operations with the friction between the drill string and the borehole wall coming to the challenging aspect of it the the drill string dynamics are very challenging because of the occurrence of unwanted vibrations and what do i mean by unwanted vibrations is that they are actual torsional and lateral vibrations which are not good for drilling out of these three torsional oscillations which are which are usually referred to as stick slip oscillations they are encountered quite often in the drilling process stick slip oscillations they occur due to a series of stopping that is stick and releasing slip events of the bit one thing that should be noted here is that these stick slip oscillations can occur with bit on bottom and off bottom as well so in the literature on bottom stick slip oscillations have been dealt with extensively and usually they are attributed to due to the regenerative effect in the bitrock interaction and some of the works that have dealt with the same are shown here however for the off bottom stick slip oscillations not many works have been published and those works that have been published have considered the off bottom stick slip oscillations to be occurring due to the negative difference between static and kinetic a long string coulomb type friction and one of the few models that has successfully been field validated for bit of bottom dynamics was developed by arsnes and amo so uh, this was lay, uh, this was the model was initially lab validated and then later extended to be validated using the field data so the 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 important aspect of this model was that it was a distributed model that characterized the stick slip oscillations as caused by coulomb friction induced side forces and from then on some of the model, some of the works that have considered this distributed model are shown here so the model proposed by arsnes and amo can be applied to the long wells and the distributed nature of the model helps in capturing higher modes that result from a wide range of frequencies and essentially help us in representing the dynamics of the system the best part of this model is that it is based on one d wave equation with a source term that has friction in it and also contains a soft sensor so the major advantage of of the soft sensor is that it can estimate the friction coefficients that is the kinematic and static friction coefficients using only the top side measurements along with estimating the angular velocity and angular strain of the drill string which is extremely necessary in validating with the downhole data and once we have this estimation happening in real time it helps us in optimizing the drilling operations that is the biggest advantage of the soft sensor that is used in this work so talking of the mathematical model the main assumptions that have been considered in this math, uh, model are the torsional motion is the dominant dynamic static and dynamic friction are modeled as a jump that is the stribed curve is assumed negligible the effect of long string cuttings distribution is assumed constant and homogeneous and effect of pressure differential inside and outside the drill string on the bending moment is not represented and is assumed to be negligible so the torque and angular velocity are represented as as follows so and from there the source term that includes friction is represented as shown here so this system of equations that are shown here the 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 bottom three system of equations that are shown here essentially constitute the entire model and are the base for the entire uh, success of the model in itself so the boundary conditions are essentially defined uh 
at the pipe collar interface where the angular velocity of the pipe is equal to the angular velocity of the collar at the interface and torque at the collar is equal to the torque at the pipe for the pipe collar interface. The Coulomb friction is considered as follows, which is, as, which is essentially defined by having a threshold uh, angular velocity as, as, as the condition. And the top drive boundary condition is defined as follows. The main part of this presentation or the, the, the main part of this work where we focus on the observer design is given as follows. The top drive angular velocity estimate is given or is, is defined as follows, where al alpha and beta are the Riemann invariants and the same for the pipe and collar sections are defined as follows. So when you replace I with P, it's for the pipe. And when you replace I with C, it's for the collar section. So the boundary conditions that have been obtained in terms of Riemann invariance for pipe and collar are defined as follows, where Z is the impedance. So now how do we look into computing the source term using the Riemann invariance is it, it we, we calculate the friction coefficients by considering the Riemann invariance as follows. And the friction estimates for Static and dynamic are given as follows. And the, the best part about the, this model is that this, uh, the best part about this model is that the friction estimates that are obtained uh, for the static and kinetic friction help us in understanding how the drilling operation is taking place, or rather, how, complica how complex the drilling operation can be. So that's one of the main insights that the estimation of friction factors would give us. So what, what do we mean by convergence criteria is the important condition is that both static and kinetic friction coefficients should be less than one and greater than zero. The bit of bot these are the bit of bottom friction estimates. And for each step, the static and kinetic friction uh, factors, they converge to a particular value. And if the value, once the value is stable for about 20 to 35 seconds, then those values are considered. And why 20 to 35 seconds is that? Usually what we have seen is that in 20 to 35 seconds, we usually have about three to five stick slip oscillations cycles. Coming to the results and discussions part of it. So here we focus on the well profiles and the evolution of friction factors. Those are the important aspects that we would focus here. And later we would show how we have estimated the downhole parameters. So as you can see, this is one of the slides that tells you about the evolution of friction factors. As you can see that the well path is, becomes horizontal after, goes through a, after it has gone through a certain depth. And you can see that the estimation, the estimation of friction factors happens once when the well starts to get deviated or rather those are the depths where we were provided with the field data. And from there, if you can see that the friction factors, uh, the static and kinetic friction factors are relatively stable uh, once the well bow becomes Horizon, more or less horizontal. You can see that the static friction factor is converts to about 0 0.6 to 0 0.65, and the dynamic friction factor or the kinetic friction factor is converts to about 0.3 to 0.4. And here you can see that after certain depth, the values are not changing. So in this slide, you can see how we estimated the static and sorry, how we estimated the downhill RPM. Uh, here you can see that the, the blue curve represents the surface RPM, the red curve represents the downhole RPM obtained using the soft sensor. So these black dash lines are the maximum and minimum downhole RPM for every 20 second cycle. So the data that we were provided from the field was a 20 second, av 20 second windowed averaged values for mean, minimum and max. Uh, 
So the main focus when we were trying to estimate the downhole RPM was to ensure that the estimate lies between the maximum and minimum, uh, uh, lies between the maximum and minimum values of the downhole RPM. So now if you see the estimates obtained, the red curve for all after once the uh, soft sensor because once the soft sensor once the values that are obtained using the soft sensor like stabilizes so after say one, after say 100 or 130 seconds so you you can see that the uh, estimates obtained for the downhole rpm are well within the range of maximum and minimum downhole rpm values so here you, in in the second plot you can see the zoomed in values for the uh, for a timestamp of 500 to 600 seconds, where you can see that the estimates are well in the bandwidth of the downhole uh, RPM, the, the minimum and maximum values. So uh, one thing that has to be observed here is that because as you can see that the variation in the RPM is quite high. So this is essentially the result of the occurrence of stick slip oscillations. And how do we know or how do we validate the occurrence of stick slip oscillations is to see the torque variations on the surface. So you can see, yes, there are torque variations on the surface and is our, our estimate, uh, is our estimator or the soft sensor able to capture the variations in the torque at the surface? Yes, you can see very clearly here that the soft sensor is able to capture the variations in the torque. And this essentially helps us in validating for the stick slip oscillations that are occurring at the downhole. So next, oh yeah, you can see here that the error between the estimated and the real, uh, real values uh, of the surface RPM and the surface torque is shown here. So for the surface RPM, you can see that it's the, the error between the estimated to real values is very small. That is, it's between zero and one, uh, zero to one most for the most part. And even the same thing for the surface torque. If we look at in absolute terms, it's between zero and one. And if we if we look at uh, in the relative terms, it's between minus 0 0.5 to 0 0.5, which is very small. So next, what did we do was we considered the same well profile. However, we simulated the RPM and the torque values for the considered well profile with the actual ROP and the actual well data. As you can see here, that after about 100 seconds, the simulated RPM and the simulated torque have increased, or rather the bit starts to engage with the bottom at about 125 to 130 seconds. You can see here that with the bit drop interaction model that is considered in the work, and that will help us in, uh, the, and that will be used to embed into the main model to estimate the dynamics of the drill string for both bit on bottom and off bottom, it, is, it was essential for us to understand how the bit rock interaction model or the law works with the simulated data with, uh, while we consider some of the real parameters. As you can see here that the downhill RPM and torque for this uh, simulated vis-a-vis -vis the estimated values, they are very close to each other. So now ideally the next step that we are looking at is, is we have considered the ROP actual, we have considered the well profile actual ones. All we need to do is we have to now put in the surface torque and the surface RPM as recorded on the field and then see how well the model behaves. That's the ideal extension that we are looking at. But on the face of it, it looks like with the simulated data, yes, we are able to estimate the downhole torque and downhole RPM very closely. So to conclude it all, we have obtained the friction factors for a horizontal well bore for an entire run of the well bore. We have obtained reasonable estimates. We validated the off bottom dynamics model with the field data, and we have presented the preliminary results for the bit rock interaction uh, inclusion in the model. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your time.